directed by John Lasseter. And yeah, my credit's the longest one on the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's one frame longer than yours. <laughs> you know, in, in designing the characters, we really studied uh, real toys. Remember that? We, we would go to Toys R Us all the time. Oh, we, we, I think I was in heaven. Yeah. Yeah, Remember we, we went to <laughs> Toys R Us and bought toys with a company credit card during work hours? Oh, wait a minute. Here comes the Darth Vader POV. Oh, that's right. Uh, we had to have that. What that's would it look like from Darth Vader's point of view? A brief Star Wars homage. <laughs> There's a lot of brief Star Wars homages in this movie. And, of course, the Hot Wheels track is orange, which they hadn't made in 15 years. It showed our age, because that's what we remembered Hot Wheel what tracks being. Purple? I know they're all they different got colors flames now. And stuff now. Kids these days, I, I don't know. It's all gone to pot. I remember in that scene um, when, when Woody accidentally <laughs> opens Buzz's helmet, um, Doug Sweetland did a really rough pass on it. And he has this great overacting of, of Buzz gasping for air and falling down at, at Woody's feet and stuff. And then he didn't have time to do the scene of, of Woody, so he just had Woody kind of literally just turn his head. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing it in <laughs> yeah. dailies, and, and we were great. on the hilarious. floor laughing, yeah. just on the floor laughing. And, and I said, don't animate that shot. <laughs> just, just add a little eye blink. That's it. You're yeah. done. Mm -hmm. It is so hilarious. And, and he didn't listen to you. He overanimated it, and I made him go back and strip. <laughs> out all of his animation right. and right. Sid Phillips the 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 bad kid next door is really Andrew Stanton and Joe Ramp right. Our wrapped, childhoods put wrapped up in it together I mean Joe Joe would trash his toys so fast he said that like Christmas evening all of his toys were broken <laughs> you know they would get that morning right. and actually um, I remember, Andrew, you were telling me a story that, that what you did to one of your broken G.I. Joes as a kid, and I said, that has got to be the, our, the introduction of right. Sid. So this, this him with the, which, uh, with the combat Carl out there on the, in the backyard is something I actually did with my friend Keith Knowlton when we were eight years old out in the, his, uh, his parents' field, and we uh, strapped an M80 to the back of uh, G.I. Joe. Well, and, and then you put him in, put a, him in a running pose and said, run, Joe, run, <laughs> run, you're never going to make it, and you blew him up. And uh, Andrew, uh, Keith Knowlton. Was he out on parole yet? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Barrel of monkeys. I had to get them in. Yeah, and I love, I love the, the line, character. we need more monkeys. And in fact, I think, Ralph, that was, that was the mo your motto throughout the whole That's production, right. trying to get more Whenever people to Whenever we needed more people. We need more, we monkeys. Need more monkeys. <laughs> it's the Pizza Planet truck. It's everybody's worst nightmare, a pizza driver. <laughs> you know, he's got, he, you know, half hour or it's free, you know. <laughs> and this guy, he's like a heavy metal dude, you know, and uh, you can see that he's, he really doesn't take care of this truck very well. And he drives like a maniac. It's very unsanitary, too. Very unsanitary. I mean, would you buy a pizza from this guy? Unbelievable. <laughs> Now we come to Pizza Planet, which actually for the longest time was Pizza Putt. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's so right. We had it was a miniature golf course, pizza parlor, right. miniature golf course, and it. It's it, almost embarrassing because we. <laughs> you, it seems almost. so obvious now that we, you know, this is something to delude Buzz to to think that he's getting home. And uh, it has all the space themes in it, but for for like two, two or three years, it did not exist. <laughs> and at the last minute, we're like, "Wait a minute! minute. Does it does a space themed, you know, pizza yeah, right. restaurant?" <laughs> Here's the killer shot. Yeah, poor Rex Grignon had to animate this shot with more humans. Seventeen than, humans, right? Yeah. And they're very complex models. He's dead yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> He's still working on the shot. In fact, <laughs> he'll be done next week. He finished it pretty quickly. We had a lot of Alien. Fun. <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of those things that we with Whacka Alien. It was an homage to Alien. Oh yeah. You know, and what cracked me up is so many people say, "Why doesn't it say Whack and Alien?" <laughs> If you look carefully at the people, notice that they all re resemble Andy somewhat uh, similar. Andy and Mom <laughs> and uh, Molly. With different, different hairstyles hair. and yeah. different skin colors. And it's also completely um, unrealistic that the crane can <laughs> to hang To what a crane can really hang on to it, right? But we said, we don't care. It's the movies. I think someone asked me about that, and they said, this is an animated movie. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> uh, Rex like, is still working at it. Right, that's Everybody what I love. Everybody else is <laughs> Faithful well, Rex. You know, and I also love the fact that they know the cat. They know this Whiskers. neighborhood. Yeah. Whiskers. Yeah. They know, you know, he gets like out of here. Sid, just like they know Scott. Right. Yeah. Why doesn't mom see a flashlight coming uh, out of her window? Shh. She was turning. Oh. Pay no attention to that man. So here we go, right into the torture. Back into our Star Wars, Star Wars. homage. Yeah. Star Wars homage number 458. Well, this is actually sort of in between uh, Star Wars homage in that that sort of Nazi interrogator from uh, from Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, right, mm -hmm. right? You know, that's right. 
we were down at Disney and we were talking to Mike Gabriel, who's one of the directors of Pocahontas. And we were talking about all the things that we used to do with our toys as kids. And he, and he said, when I was a kid, I used to burn things with a magnifying glass. You're, you're going to have that in the film, aren't you? And Andrew and I looked at each other and said, <laughs> we, we are, are now. now. <laughs> Who can be the most assaultive voice we can get? We got Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller, you right. know, the great magician. He is so loud, and so we had him record it, and and it was they, incredible. They, it was he was so loud that they said in the lobby of the recording studio they can hear him through the, <laughs> through sound all the soundproof walls. walls. Yeah. Actually, we're we're here. Ralph, John, and I well, got to be the male chorus that's with right. him. Oh, that's right. Buzz Lightyear. Oh, yeah. Buzz Ready? Lightyear. One, two, three. Buzz, Buzz Lightyear. Lightyear. Yeah, I love this nice. shot because it's like hitting the nail on the head as many times as you can. Yeah. Yeah. I want to fly. So, okay, let's show an open window, no. and, and let's show a, a bird flying. Bird flying. But, <laughs> and then Woody says, what does Woody say? You are a toy, you can't, can't fly. fly. It's like, okay, now let's have an airplane go by. Yeah. Now let's have a balloon go past. You know, it's like <laughs> Get it? Get it? Symbolism. He's the and, you're and you're a little, little guy in the world. Woody slaps Buzz, if you notice, with his own hand. Uh, which was inspired from Commando. We heard this. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, we, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, we, we heard about this story in the movie Commando, where he gets hidden in a shed, and these this whole army of South you know, American army is going to like <laughs> attack him, and he cuts off this guy's arm with a machete. And he asked the director if he could like, I, how about in the next take, I pick up his arm and I oh, smash Jesus. it with his own fist. <laughs> <laughs> and the director, I think it's McTiernan or something, just said, I think it's going a little too far, Arnold. Arnold. And we, and we, I just remember that when we were doing this, like, yeah, we can Let's do it. Let's do this. <laughs> this battleship sequence, I think, shows what the toys do when they're waiting for something more exciting to right. happen. Well, you know what I like about it is, is the, also it's strip battleship. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? That's right. You know, and he wants the I nose. I want the nose. Give me the right. nose. He all, he's already wearing the hat. And, but look and, how bad of a player. Yeah. Well, so if you really look it's at it, he's, he's covered the board with hits and just little squares. He's where missed the everything but the boats. He's yeah. that stupid. Yeah, he's that stupid. <laughs> and, he's also and, and he gr his... grouped all of his, his ships together in exactly the same spot. <laughs> right. So if you hit one, <laughs> you hit one, all. you got them all. <laughs> right. We used to get a lot of weird logic police people going, it's Wait like five or six o'clock. How did he get this box so late for the postal service? <laughs> it's like, who delivers packages that <laughs> late? It's like, we're like, I don't think people will know this. Know who cares? He right. just yeah. got home. Karen Kaiser, um, she, she has two sons, and she's such a great mom. And this is like, she did such a great job with this scene because there's, there's a real sensitive quality to the. Yeah. The animation of both uh, Andy and, and the mom. Oh, it's just computer animation, John. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not this real? This is with computers? <laughs> Here comes a big cheat where Buzz yeah. is straight now, and there they keep going. <laughs> they keep going. They're about three feet from the wall, but Buzz is still pushing <laughs> from off the, the wall. Oh, Buzz, go. go. You can do it. <laughs> it's the a hyper, movie. <laughs> the hyperextended version of Buzz right. Lightyear. But nobody knows this. Hopefully. Another payback to all bullies. <laughs> yeah. <for> me. <laughs> I'm hoping they're all dreaming about ponies. And we we always envision that Sid's dad is the kind of um, it's the kind of uh, consumer that the big hardware stores prey on, to where they get <laughs> the him into the home handyman, the home handyman <laughs> right. that never finishes any job. And yeah. so he started putting in a sprinkler system in the backyard years ago. Years ago, <laughs> and he left the trenches out. And, right. And, and, and everything's half done. Now, this, this is the point where everybody in the theater, we knew everybody was, most right. of the smart people were going, they're going to like the rocket. They're going to like the rocket. They're, they're going like, to light the rocket. Shit, <laughs> like, Everybody's right. going to like the rocket. And, and we actually, you know, originally just had them light the rocket. Right. And it absolutely, you know, drove us crazy, the predictability of it. So we said, oh. let's just play into it. <laughs> right, right. Let's just put one match, one rocket. One fuse and, and one car, one and car, one car. <laughs> and the wonderful like moan that oh. happens in the audience. It was the best response in the whole movie. Was that yeah. we were so excited when we we showed this for the first time with an audience. They just definitely went pulled nuts. it off. Because at this point in time, you would stop the movie and say, "What happens next?" And we actually and they <laughs> and people like wouldn't wouldn't be able to yeah. tell. Remember, Ash was very frustrated with that scene. He did a mock one of. Andy picking up the tree and hitting mom over the head with it. <laughs> <laughs> Frankincense, this is myrrh. This is a vestige of an old, uh, we had a karaoke gag. Karaoke Christmas party. Yeah, they, they had a pop-up uh, Christmas book with a tree up, and then Buzz was actually singing karaoke using Mr. Spell to read oh, off the of. Oh, the weather outside, outside yeah. is bright. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why that, that got cut, because it's actually pretty funny. <laughs>
but yeah, it's funny. It was we were a really small group of people that made it, and uh, we're all predominantly pretty young. And uh, somebody compared us once to sort of the guys at NASA that put the man on the moon. It's like we were all too young and stupid to realize what we were doing is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and from us from story all the way to technically uh, making this movie. And I'm glad we were young and ignorant and stupid because uh, we uh, didn't let that stop us. And uh, we knowing what we know now. I know. We'd never want to do it again. It's impossible. <laughs> Kids, you know, don't try this at home. I always tell people that it's like, you know, what we did, we just made what we thought was fun that we'd like to watch ourselves. We just yeah. made it for ourselves, yeah, you know? Yeah, we did. I mean, that's why there's and, so uh, many, like, oh, homages to every right. great movie that we've and ever so loved. so unabashedly put them in. Yeah. <laughs> But even more importantly, you know, we we were all we've all worked together for a long time. The, certainly, the core group that started this film, and we all were possessed with the same dream that we wanted to realize. And I think it was holding that dream in front of us the whole time that we were making the film is what kept it going, and what allowed us to be crazy enough to put all the time and effort into it, and allowed us to succeed at it. I love you, man. <laughs>